Let's look at some mixtures of acid-base systems. In particular, let's look at something called KHP, or potassium hydrogen phthalate. This is actually a potassium salt of a partly neutralized phthalic acid. Phthalic acid is a diprotic family. And so it has two equilibria and two equilibrium constants. Let's consider a mixture of KHP with some sodium hydroxide. Let's consider a 50 milliliter mixture of KHP at 0.025 molar. And let's mix that with 25 milliliters of sodium hydroxide at 0.0413 molar. What is the pH of this system? Well, first let's consider what might happen with the KHP or HA species reacting with sodium hydroxide. We might expect to get the dianion plus water plus spectator sodium ion. In these cases, it's important to let the strong reagent react. So we need to know whether the sodium hydroxide is the limiting reagent or whether it, it is an excess. If it's an excess, it will control the pH of the solution. So let's calculate the original moles of each of the starting materials. So the original moles of HA is equal to 50 milliliters, or 50 times 10 to the minus 3 liters, times its concentration, 0 0.0250 molar. This gives us a value of 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of HA. The original number of moles of sodium hydroxide is equal to 200, or 25 milliliters, or 25 times 10 to the minus 3 liters times 0.0413 molar, or 1.03, and the next two digits are 25, times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So we see that there is an excess or a greater quantity of the HA. All of the sodium hydroxide will be used up, and we'll see we'll have remaining some of HA and will form some A2 minus. So this is the important equilibrium that will be involved and we'll see that in our weak acid base equation we want to use Ka2. So let's calculate the number of moles of the anion that's formed. That'll be the same as the number of moles as the sodium hydroxide added. That's the number we just calculated, 1.0325 times 10 to the minus 3. The number of moles of the HA that's left 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 minus the amount that reacts with the sodium hydroxide. That gives us a value of 2.175 times 10 to the minus 4 moles. 
From these two calculations, we can get the new concentrations or the analytical concentrations for the acid and base form after the sodium hydroxide is reacted. For the HA, it's 2.175 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by the total volume, which is 25 plus 50 milliliters or 75 milliliters or 10 to the minus 3 liters. That numerically works out to be 2.9, next digit 0, times 10 to the minus 3 molar. The analytical concentration of the conjugate base, the dianine in this case, is equal to the 1.03 times 10 to the minus 3 moles divided by the 75 milliliters. And numerically, that works out to be 1.376 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. So let's plug these into our generalized weak acid base equation. We're going to need a Ka2 value. And again, that comes from the fact that we want the equilibrium linking the HA and the dianion form. So we'll have real numerical values for CHA star minus the hydrogen ion concentration plus hydroxide concentration over CA star plus hydrogen ion concentration minus hydroxide. We look up in a table the equilibrium constant for the second dissociation step for phthalic acid, and we find 3.90 times 10 to the minus 6. Since we have both the acid and base forms here, we have a buffer, we would expect the H plus concentration to be in the ballpark of the Ka value, so it's going to be slightly acidic. We might conclude from that that these two concentrations, the hydroxide, is going to be very small compared to the H plus concentration. If that's the case, then we could rewrite our expression in terms of just the hydrogen ion concentrations and we could rearrange and solve this. This is going to be a quadratic equation so we could get the solution exactly. But let's think a moment here. We might be able to save ourselves a little arithmetic. If this is around 10 to the minus 6 for the hydrogen ion concentrations, our analytical concentrations are around 10 to the minus 3 and 10 to the minus 2. Well, we might assume then that the hydrogen ion concentration is much smaller or negligible compared to the CHA star or the analytical concentration of the conjugate base. And therefore, we could neglect that. Then we have a very simple arithmetic problem. Just the ratio of the analytical concentrations times the Ka value should give us a good value for the hydrogen ion concentration. So 3.9 times 10 to the minus 6 times the ratio of HA, which is 2.9 times 10 to the minus 3, divided by 1.376 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. That gives us a numerical value of 8.21 times 10 to the minus 7. So indeed, we check our, see our assumption, it was good.
eight times ten to the minus seven is small compared to the two analytical concentrations. So we can calculate our pH now as minus the log of 8.21 times 10 to the minus 7. Numerically we get 6.08. The next digit is a 5, but we see we only have two significant figures in the argument of our log, so the mantissa should only have two significant figures. So we would round this to 6.08 as our final pH.